hi everyone welcome back to the channel so i've been playing a lot of dragon quest 11 recently i wasn't going to review it but then i decided well i've put a lot of hours into it so let's do a review so it's a little bit of an older game on the switch but arguably one of the best games on the switch so without further ado let's take a look at this review Let's start with the story then. So the game is set in Erdria, and the start of the game begins as the kingdom of Dundrasil is invaded by an army of monsters. A baby is found floating down the river by an old man called Chalky in a village called Cobblestone. You're raised by Chalky's daughter, and some years later, after your coming of age ceremony, you're told the truth about your birth and your adoption. Amber, Chalky's daughter, decides to send you to meet the King of Helidor. The King suspects you of being an evil spy and imprisons you. Whilst imprisoned, you meet a thief named Eric, who has been sent to help you. The mark on your hand is proof that you're a luminary, a legendary hero chosen by the world tree Yggdrasil to save Adira from evil. Throughout the game, you continue to meet many characters who join your party in order to try and rid the world of this evil. Wait, there's something there. I was hugely immersed into the story and I loved the way it was written. It was a fantastic story to follow and it made the game absolutely brilliant. So because of that, I'm scoring the story part 9 out of 10. The game plays like a traditional JRPG with turn-based combat. You do have the option to instruct each party member to attack differently or you're able to instruct all party members to attack in the same way. Just like your usual leveling up system in RPGs, once you win a battle you gain XP, you gain money and then you gain points in order to spend on your skill tree and each character you can choose which direction of the skill tree you want to improve whether that be wands, whether that be whips, whether that be swords just like your standard RPG skill trees. During combat you do have the ability to move around but this is just purely visual it doesn't alter the effects of the battle or change the outcome of the battle in any way. I just want to talk about a negative from me so with the gameplay you do have the option to change to play in the classic 16-bit Super Nintendo graphics so if you have played those old Dragon Quest games I'm sure it's great for a bit of a nostalgia hit but for me I really hated it there are a few parts of the story that you have to play in that mode they don't last for too long and I'm really glad they didn't because for me it just kind of ruined the immersion of the game. I was really taken by the game and I absolutely loved it. I can't stop playing it. And then when I had to play in that old graphic style, yeah, it, it did spoil it a bit for me, I must say. And because of that, I'm going to rate the gameplay 8 out of 10. As we move on to visuals then, you'll know that if you've followed this channel for a little while, cell shaded artwork is my all time favourite artwork, so for me this game looks incredible. I can't believe it was once a 3DS game to be honest with you, it's amazing that they managed to put all of this on a 3DS. Now this is obviously the definitive edition on the Switch and wow it looks incredible. The scenery, whether that's the desert, the forest, the rain, the cities, they're really full of life. And I must say, that is quite incredible to get that much, you know, on screen at once from a handheld device. As we've seen, even with big games like Pokemon, they've been quite barren. Whereas this, there seems to be an awful lot going on 
as well as some fantastic scenery as well. Each character animation has been done amazing. I love how they've given each animation kind of funny names. Um, I love all the comedy to this game as well. But yeah, visually, I just can't fault it. I really think it looks fantastic. There's no faults from me, so I've got to score this 10 out of 10 for the visuals. When it comes to value for money, you're always going to get plenty of value with a JRPG. This one is getting a little bit harder to find physically. Uh, I picked this up second hand for £40. I know that you can find it for between 40 and 50 brand new as well. Eshop price is going to set you about 40 to 50 pounds as well. But as I said, I think that's really good value for a game that's going to give you hundreds, if not more than that, hours. So value of money, I've got to score it 10 out of 10 as well. Overall then, we're scoring this 37 out of 40. And despite being one of the early releases for the Switch, it's still got to be one of the greatest games on the system. It holds up really well and it's just an overall fantastic JRPG. Whether you're someone who has loads of experience in that genre, whether it's your first time ever playing a JRPG, there's so many reasons to own this and I would say try to get that physical copy whilst you still can because it is getting harder to find. If you've stuck around this long, thank you so much. If you're new, do hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Take care, everyone. Thank you, guys.